There's pain, there's suffering. The, the earth is now uh, kind of crying out. And we, we see this through the difficulties we see in life from hurricanes to tornadoes and earthquakes and tsunamis. And the world is just broken. It's a fallen world and we long for God to come back and restore everything. I wanna deal with the biggest question that every one of us has when it comes to God. And that is if God is good and if God is great, why do bad things happen to good people? Why do bad things happen at all? Why does God allow suffering to happen? Why does God allow evil in the world? What is God up to and why does God do that? In fact, I think for most of us, we would say that if you were God or if I were God, then things would probably run a little bit different, right? I mean, it wouldn't have been 30 years since the Cowboys won a Super Bowl, okay? I'm sorry, is that too soon? Okay, it's been 30 years. Anyway, um, Maybe for you, it's, you know what, if, if I were God, I would do things a little bit different. If I were God, we wouldn't have humidity or crickets or anything like that. If I were God, everything would work out great in the world. I heard this story. I, I always love this, this news report I heard years ago. Uh, this was about a Czechoslovakian woman by the name of Vera. And Vera had just found out that her husband had been cheating on her. And she was devastated. And she went back to their uh, apartment, which was on the third floor, and she's pacing around their apartment thinking, what am I going to do? And she came up with two options. I'm either going to kill him or kill myself. And so she decided uh, to just end her own life, and she ran blindly out their third-story window and fell, but only suffered some minor scrapes and bruising because she landed on her husband walking by <laughs> and killed him, Okay. <laughs> Now, when you hear that, you're like, yeah, that's the way it should be, okay? That's what I would allow if I were God. I mean, it would rain down lightning or maybe Czechoslovakian women upon people that need to be punished, right? And you've got those kind of things in your life where you think, if I were God, you know what? Uh, uh, only good things would happen to good people. Bad things would not happen to them. If I were God, you know, marriages would stay together, kids would love and respect their parents, they would all get straight A's, everybody would get into the college of their choice, there'd be no debt, everybody'd be happy, every raindrop would produce a flower, every couple that wants kids would have three at a time, you know, it would just be wonderful, right? But that's not reality. And that's not the reality that you're living with. That's not the reality that you're dealing with. And so for many of us, we've been trying to figure out, is God really good. Now, what's interesting is when you look at the scriptures, there's this guy that we read about in the first half of the Bible, the Old Testament, which is God's covenant with ancient Israel. And we read about King David, a historical king, historical figure, lived around 900 BC. This is a guy that suffered all kinds of difficult things. This is a guy that went through all kinds of different pain, all kinds of dysfunction in his family. He had, you know, kids killing each other and hurting each other, and, and he had a boss that was trying to kill him when he was uh, anointed as king, and everything about him would have said, God, wait a second, what's the deal? Why aren't you blessing me the way I think you should? And yet, he writes this. Take a look at this passage we read last week. The Lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. That's the kind of God that we want to know. That's the kind of God we don't leave. And that's the kind of God we're trying to discover that we see as the God in the Bible and the God that we see in Jesus. The question is, if he's that good, why does he allow bad things to happen? So let's get one thing clear first of all. God doesn't cause bad things to happen to people. Take a look at what is said here in Lamentations chapter 3 by the prophet Jeremiah. He says, God does not willingly bring affliction or grief to the children of men. In other words, that is not his desire for your life. To which all of us kind of push back and say, well, then why are there bad things then? If God doesn't cause it, why does he allow it? If God was good, then he would stop it. And I just want to tell you, what we're about to talk about, I recognize is going to pale in comparison to some of your pain. And I'm going to give you some answers that hopefully might help you intellectually make sense of things, but if you are in the middle of a pain or suffering or struggle in your life right now, you're going to think, that helps my mind but not my heart. 
And we're going to have a time of prayer at the end of our service today. And Thursday night, lots of people came down front just to pray with somebody because you need more than answers. You need hope. You need healing. You need prayer. You need to sense God's presence because of the pain you're going through in your life right now. And I also recognize that the answers I'm able to give in just a few moments of our time together maybe aren't going to be enough. And that's why I really want to encourage you to check out Alpha tomorrow night. Alpha is just the, you know, the first letter of the Greek alphabet. It simply means let's go back to the beginning. And, and it really gets to the heart of what it is that we wrestle with. Is there a God? What is he like? And can we trust the scriptures? And did Jesus really live? Did he really resurrect? All those kind of things over several weeks and that starts tomorrow night. I'm going to be here. I cannot wait to experience that with you. It's going to be incredible. But here's what I want to do in our time we have together today. I want to do my best job to try to answer this question. Why is there evil and suffering in the world? Why is there pain in the world? And why do we struggle with these things and wonder, is God good? So let's just get some answers here right away. The first one is this. Some bad things are the result of our own sin. Let's be honest. If, if you eat nachos three times a day, you can't blame God for your health, okay? Just because you drink slim fast, it doesn't pair well, you know, with a plate of wings and, you know, a bucket of nachos. It's just not the same, all right? So, it, you know, when we eat poorly and drink poorly and do horrible things to our body, we can't say, God, why would you allow this blood pressure? How dare you, you know? Some of these things are our own fault. Some of these are our own sin. Because of the, the addictions we've got into or the choices that we've made or the things that we've avoided or the things that we have dipped our toe into, and it's really just the result of our own sin. Here's the second thing. Some bad things are the result of other people's sin. If another person cheats on you, if another person is abusive, if your son or daughter makes self-destructive choices, the suffering and the pain that you feel is really their choice, their sin, their mistake. If a drunk driver hits and injures or kills someone you love, you suffer because of someone else's sin. It isn't really fair to God if I pick up a gun and shoot somebody and then say, why would God allow that to happen? Because some things are the result of other people's sin. Here's the third thing. Some bad things are the results of Satan's attacks. Now, I know that we are in, you know, a, a progressive society and there's things that we don't necessarily believe anymore, but can I tell you why I actually believe that there is a Satan? Because Jesus did. And when you're able to predict your own death and resurrection and pull it off, I tend to go with everything you say, okay? And Jesus believed and Jesus knew because Jesus had experienced his schemes before. And the reality is we live in a world where Satan roams around like a lion seeking to destroy you and me. In fact, the moment you become a Christian, you are a target. As my pastor friend Josh Howerton says, the birthmark of a Christian is a bullseye. He is looking to take you down. Now, here's the good news. Satan is not omnipresent like God, which means most of us will go our entire lives with never coming face to face with him. So when your car doesn't start, you don't have Satan to blame for that, okay? Maybe you should have had your oil changed, okay? When, when there's bad things that happen, it's not always Satan around every corner that's making these things happen. The reality is it might be Satan, it might be Satan's demons, or it could just be we live in a broken world, which is basically the fourth thing here. Most bad things happen because we live in a fallen world. We read in Genesis, when sin enters the world, everything breaks. Adam and Eve's relationship breaks. They begin to discover shame and guilt. They feel shame and guilt towards God. They no longer feel connected with each other. They're kicked out of Eden, and then suddenly difficult things begin to happen in them. There's pain. There's suffering. The, the earth is now uh, kind of crying out. And we, we see this through, you know, the difficulties we see in life, from hurricanes to tornadoes and earthquakes and tsunamis. And the world is just broken. It's a fallen world, and we long for God to come back and restore everything, but right now we live in a fallen world and bad things happen. It's just the way things are. Jesus says that God allows the rain to fall on the good and the bad. In other words, one person can pick up a knife and cut fresh baked bread and another person can take that, that same knife and take a life. Gravity can cause you and I to be able to stay anchored to the earth and it can also cause someone to fall and break their leg. It's just the result of living in a broken world. And sometimes people do good things and sometimes people do bad things, but we have that choice.